What's up, Fox Den Fox? You know, today we are reviewing the Razer Viper Ultimate. Now, if you don't care about updates for this channel, you can skip right here and get to the real review. But first, I just want to say that I did read your poll. I know that this wasn't on the poll, and I'll tell you that why later. But um, I just want to say that there is another poll up because it is tied. So whichever one wins this current poll will be the video I make on Tuesday. And if it's tied again, then I will choose for you. So with that said, I also want to say that I'm going to be trying to make two videos a week, one on Tuesday, one on Saturday. The one on Saturday is going to take less time and generally be more review focused than full on GPU and CPU benchmarks that happen on Tuesday, which usually takes a few days to actually edit and make. With that said, let's hop into the review of the Razer Viper Ultimate. So the specific Razer Viper Ultimate I'm reviewing today is $149.99 and it comes with the charging dock included. The Razer Viper Ultimate does not have any Bluetooth functionality, but it has a 2.4 gigahertz band for light speed gaming, which to be completely honest with you, after playing on a wire for my entire life, I haven't noticed a latency issue with this, except in some situations, and I will get into that later on. But let's go over a few of the core fundamentals first. The general ergonomics of the mouse, if you use a Razer Death Adder Elite, which is my main mouse, this is a Razer Death Adder Elite in terms of feel. It's not exactly the same, you've got the cool little cutouts and stuff here and it is a little bit slimmer, but it still has the same length to it. So although it's not quite as girthy, it still gets the job done, uh, which I wish I could say for myself. It also has the grip tape on the side, or not grip tape, grip tape costs extra, but it does have grip on the sides and it does seem a little bit more sturdy than the ones on the Death Adder Elite because it is just more mass, which means that it will probably be harder to take off. Whereas the reason why I upgraded mice in the first place is because my grip tape fell off of the original Death Adder Elite. I know I said tape, it's okay. So this mouse has full RGB support through the Razer Synapse software, so you can connect it, as well as the RGB charging dock. The charging dock does cost extra, but... First of all, you kind of need it if you want to have a decent time. Otherwise, you may as well just play with a regular plugged in mouse because the way you charge it is through a micro USB. So there's not a whole lot of point to getting a mouse that you can unplug and then plug back in when using the actual dock itself is worth it. That said, the dock is $20 more. However, another thing that's really cool with the RGB Chroma dock is the fact that it will tell you when you're charging your mouse, which I will show you right now, it'll actually let you know the indicators. It'll show you green if it's fully charged, a breathing green if it's charged most of the way up, a yellow breathing charge if it's middle, so 50% ish, orange if it's low, and red if it is critical. But I would be surprised if you saw the critical red if you treated this like any other piece of technology in your house. Even if you don't, because I have missed a few nights charging this. It has a 70 hour battery life recommended, I believe, on here, or like, like that's their spec. Um, in real time performance, I have used it for two days unsustained and it's been fine it's died on me once and uh that was because when it came out of the box for me it was 40 percent, and i used it all day but when you go from 100 percent, you'll have a hard time taking it down to zero uh anytime soon and that is with rgb on so you do get a lot of battery life even if it isn't the full 70 hours i feel like 70 hours probably means the brightness on the mouse is turned down some and everything but the battery life is generally very good, especially because of the charging dock. It reminds you that you should probably put it on the charging dock before going to bed and it'll charge overnight for you. You don't got to worry about it. The next day you take it off and you'll play like normal. And again, like I said, just in case if you miss a charge, there is a micro USB slot on the mouse that also is the same micro USB being charged for the Chroma. So you take this out and you plug it into the mouse and voila, now you got a charging mouse while you're using it. And I'm pretty sure, actually I'm very sure, that it charges faster than it dies, um, even with RGB on. So that was a very, very good positive for me. And in terms of latency issues, I will get into the bad later on, but in general, everyday usage, I haven't had an issue with this mouse in terms of gaming on anything except for Blizzard software. For the first time, in probably a year, I was like, I want to boot up Modern Warfare, play some Warzone. Huh, bad idea, because guess what? This mouse, as soon as Battle.net opens up, stutters like nobody's business. And this never happened. This isn't like a driver issue or anything. I'm fully up to date on drivers. 
and back on my wired mouse, it never had any of those issues. And it's Razer, so I don't know if it's Battle.net's fault or Razer's fault, and I haven't seen anything else um, on this situation. And I have seen a few Battle.net issues with mouse lag, so it could very well be Battle.net's fault, and I don't want to give you the wrong impression that it's the mouse's fault, because I'm sure... It's probably Battle.net's fault, but I did notice it and I felt like it'd be wrong to not be like, hey, here's the full scoop. But even with that said, generally speaking, if you buy it straight from Razer, I believe they have a warranty of some sort. So if you wanted to buy it, test it out, load up Battle.net, Epic Game Store, um, Steam, and make sure your games work with it before you send it back. You'll probably have plenty of time to do so. Let me check what their uh, warranty is like. So you can get up to a two-year warranty and access to reliable tech support, but if you just buy it without a warranty, it gives you 14 days, which in my opinion isn't enough time to, you know, make sure it doesn't break on you, but it is definitely enough time to make sure that all your games work on it. And the truth is, this mouse isn't going to break on you. Um, I strongly believe it is made out of plastic. There's no doubt about that. Um, and the sides are made of the grip tape and it does seem like there may, nope, they cover those up. I was like, maybe there's a chance for you to peel this off, but I think you'd have a hard time peeling this off unintentionally. And then on the bottom, you've got the grip, which isn't an optional feature. This comes with the mouse, no matter what you buy. The design is really cool. And if you've ever used a razor mouse, Imagine how it is to use a razor mouse and that's how it is to click this. I haven't noticed a super discernible difference. Let me grab it real quick. So this is the razor, a death adder elite. And this is the one that I've been talking about because, um, it is my previous mouse. I have very good experiences with it and it does sort of bring into a question of how much is a wire worth it to you? Because although this is slightly larger, so if you have smaller hands, you probably won't like the feel of this. This is over double the price. And I wanted to just do a mouse comparison real quick to tell if I could tell the difference. Very slight and only in pitch. I mean, I may not be the best mouse reviewer out there because this is my first mouse review I've ever done, but it feels almost exactly the same. This one is heavier. This is a very, very light gaming mouse and I do want to get into that as well. Um, but I just wanted to talk about for value sake, if you're okay with having a wire, Generally speaking, you're getting most of the performance out of this. You're getting two buttons on one side, whereas this one has two buttons on both sides. Uh, slightly bigger again, slightly heavier, and no grip on the bottom, and a very much subpar grip tape that has fallen off of mine. But with that said, I still think these are made to last. I don't think that these are meant to get ruined after a few years like mine did. I just have terrible... Uh, mouse manners and I think that that's something to consider and if you do have smaller hands maybe consider the, the wired viper or the viper 8k it is very light as I just said and the way they managed to do that is by having a 500 milliamp hour battery but like I said earlier as well this 500 milliamp hour battery lasts about 70 hours on their spec sheet uh, for general daily use over two days uh, and it should still be fine because it does go to sleep automatically which is a very very nice feature to have so in terms of the pros, you're getting two buttons on both sides, a very fast and responsive gaming mouse that is a wired gaming mouse. You're really not losing any latency because of it being a wireless mouse. Uh, you do not have Bluetooth functionality, but it comes with 2.4 gigahertz. It is very light and very comfortable in the hand. I have larger hands. Um, medium hands will also do fine. And also smaller hands shouldn't have a problem with this mouse whatsoever. But if you do have chronically small hands, uh, the Death Adder Mini should be something you consider. The biggest downfall that I have is the price. Um, but even then, wireless mice generally do fall in this price range, so I can't really fault Razer for it, especially because you're getting the RGB chroma dock as well, which is a fancy Razer tax nonetheless, but it still is very nice. And I know that this mouse is going to last me. I have no doubt in my mind that this will probably be my mouse for the next five years. And I can say that with full sincerity because this mouse is awesome. The only thing I wish it had was Bluetooth so I could switch to the test bench. But um, other than that, honestly, it's very, very nice. And this is where the 2.4 gigahertz band hides. So if you ever want to take it on travel, it is just in this little slot right here. And it covers up like that. Or... If you really are like a sports car person, you take this off, get a little bit of extra weight. 
I also wanted to mention DPI sliders. You get five DPI switches on this one, um, if that's something for your privy. They are located on the bottom, which is a little bit uh, uncomfortable compared to, once again, something that's half the price, which has two DBI switches, so you know which way is up and down. You don't have to cycle through to get a lower or higher DPI on one button. The only problem that I have is sometimes you will probably end up accidentally clicking the DPI slider at some point, but that's not an issue because you don't have to flip the mouse upside down to get to the DPI. But again, they probably did it to uh, save space and to keep it very minimalistic on the top. And I do think that having obviously multiple DPI switches is a must. I do wish it was on the top. Otherwise, that's the general basics of this mouse. Uh, do I recommend it? Yes, with an asterisk beside it. I think that you can probably find better wireless gaming mice if you, not better, but different. If you don't care about RGB, you may be able to get, or uh, super fast response times, you'll probably be able to get a Bluetooth one. Uh, or if you really care about battery life, battery life on some mice lasts for almost a year without any charging. So there are very much different ways to go. But what you are getting here is a signature Razer quality. You're getting the RGB on the Chroma Dock and the Razer mouse itself. And the Chroma Dock is something that, although there are docks out there, this dock is very nicely built, even though it's plastic. And it has a little USB up top, which means you can charge your phone while also charging your mouse, which is really cool. So if you're a Razer fan like me, I say sure. If you want to get a nice upgrade from a wired mouse, I think this is a great option. Uh, if you want to explore a little bit more, I don't blame you. So... Do your own research uh, and let me know what you think of this video. This is just sort of a jumping off point and, uh, you know, maybe look at some Logitech options and stuff like that. But otherwise, I think that this was a good investment in my part. And I think that anybody who buys this mouse will not be wanting other features. I think that they will enjoy the mouse that they have. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, like, subscribe, do what you usually do. And as always, buy yourself something nice.